Okay, so we're here to talk about restful silica dust and how ASHA has changed the law and why it's important to you guys. The respirable silica dust is found in just about everything that we do in construction and in public works. From sweeping to sawing to milling, any part of the construction or housekeeping activities. And ASHA determined that we could save over 600 lives a year from cancer, from COPD, by becoming much more aware and controlling the silica dust. So here's what happened. They changed the law and they went from 250 micrograms per cubic meter down to 25. Now here's the question. How do we know what 25 milli micrograms per cubic meter is? So I have a little small package of, silk, of sweet and low here. Sweet and low package contains one gram of material. This one, one package of sweet and low is 40,000 times the amount of exposure that would be allowed with the silica dust under the OSHA rule. So Mark, my friend here, has risen me up to 13 feet above this area. Picture in your mind, if we're at a football stadium and I'm in the middle of that football stadium, and this amount of silica dust was blown into the air, everybody within that football field would have been overexposed by the current regulation. So pretty much, standing here now, as far as you could see in every direction, you would have been overexposed and put yourself at risk and potential damage. So what we want to do is explain a little bit about the law, explain what happens with exposure to the crystal silica dust, and how you can help remediate it. Stuff. And the problem is, is that the particulate silica, silica is made up from three minerals, quartz being the predominant one. And the problem is, by the time, you can have dust in the air, so like when you're sweeping, when you're milling, um, any type of construction activity in both asphalt and concrete. Most of us know and accept, hey, if I'm cutting concrete, the silica there. If I'm dealing with sand, sand is silicone, so they're silicon, so therefore we know that silica dust is involved. But it's also in any, any fracturing of the asphalt because of the aggregate located in, in, the, uh, in the asphalt. So as I said, uh, ASHA has reduced uh, the limits from 250 down to 50 uh, micrograms per, per cubic meter in an eight hour time work average or an action level of 25. And the 25 means if, you're have, if you have a worker that is exposed to that material, then he is required, we're required under the law to provide medical surveillance. So the medical surveillance uh, includes a medical, a work history workup, a lung x-ray, it's pretty extensive. So you can provide certain types of controls and measures to stop that. So you're required to do exposure assessment and to use special engineering controls. So exposure assessment is to be able to conduct silica exposure testing. This is uh, Mr. Lindsey Cook and we're on the job site and he is using a sniffer device, which you can see here. It's a vacuum that's sucking the air in through a, a special filter. It's filtering out all the dust and then that dust is compared or tested for, for silica. The interesting thing I didn't know until we started working with this program is that the standard for silica, which they look to see, the standard is Arizona road dust. So that is the standard, believe it or not, that they're using when they're testing. The fines for non-compliance are pretty heavy, $12,657 for every occurrence. But the occurrence would be every worker on the site. The occurrence would be every time you do it. And repeated, it goes to $127,000. And let me say that OSHA loves to find cities just as well as they do contractors. Just because we're a government entity, that means that does not mean that we're going to be exempt from that um, from that, that scrutiny. Now, so you can do medical, so you are required to do medical testing, but what I will allow you to do is use engineering controls, and they gave us some guidelines. 
So there's a table one, and on table one, it addresses construction activities. So what are construction activities? Well, construction activities are jackhammering. We all do that. Hand saw with concrete saws to cut utility cuts. We do that in the city. You may not do milling. Some do, actually. We talked to the city of Atlanta yesterday. They have three milling machines. Most guys contract that out. But if you contract it out and you have a contractor come in to do that for you, guess what? You're still liable. That doesn't give you any release from the responsibility to make sure not only the workers that the contractor has, but also your employees that are supervising. So we say, oh, well, the guy's in a pressurized cab. No problem. You go around here and you see all this equipment, nice pressurized cabs. The, the, the actual worker inside the cab is protected, and that's what the law is designed to protect. However, what about your supervisors staying on the ground watching? What about all your ground crews that are staying outside the equipment? They're not being protected. So what, so what OSHA does is they allow engineering controls and the most common, simplest way to control dust is water. But the problem with using water is you don't always get complete control. So when you have, for instance, a jackhammer, make it a lot of, of dust, if you use water, you're going, to get, you're going to get a certain amount of control. The same thing in a milling operation. Here's the interesting part. We say, well, we're not doing construction, we're just doing street, street sweeping. Under table one, you have a section called housekeeping. And under the new law that came into effect just this past fall of last year, any sweeping can no longer be dry sweeping. So I know there's a bunch of you guys that have street sweepers that have water systems attached, but if it's like the street sweepers in our construction unit, a lot of times it'll work. Pump freeze up, hey, we'll fix it next year. So the guy's out running the street sweeper, and it's like a little dust bowl. You see this big white cloud. I've seen many, many average engine and, and elevator type sweepers out sweeping with this little white dust cloud going around. So sweeping is now part of the uh, activity that you must now use wet sweeping to be able to control it. So you need to have a written control plan. Now, if you have a written control plan, you've got to have some type of data that you use to put in your control plan. So you can do, you can hire someone to come out and do the testing of your environment. You can put together a medical surveillance plan, or you can use data that's provided by someone like ourselves. So we take the material that we call Nisalex. Now, here's the problem with just using water. Water's great. We love it. But it has a really high surface tension. So the dust particles hate water. The high surface tension, they want to just to float on top. They don't want the, the water molecule. It's like positive and negative. The water and the dust particle tend to repel each other. That's the purpose of Nisalex. Nisalex is Latin for no silicon. So what we did in this particular material is we came up with a way to cause that dust silica particle, that particle of quartz and trilobite and the other things that are in there, to bolt to become hydrophilic. They are now water loving. They actually bolt the water to absorb. It lowers the surface tension of water. So if you were taking um, uh, a truck and you were you out uh, uh, sawing or sweeping and using that dust truck to fill your sweepers, with just three or four ounces of this material, that sweeper, if it used to have to fill it up once every two hours or every hour, you make it go six or eight hours on an entire ship with one load of water because the water is so much more effective. But what's even more important is, is our industrial hygienists have, and, and Lindsey Cook is the person who we contracted to do this for us. If you look his name up on the internet, he is the world's expert in silica dust and its effect on the workers. He's lectured around the world about it. So what he's doing is putting together the data to say, if you use so if you use deselect same with your water, then that is a sufficient control to give you the control that you need so your workers are below that 25 micrograms per cubic meter. And if that's the case, then you do not need to do medical testing. You have that in your written control plan 
and you've protected your workers and you have the confidence and safety that you're not going to have a violation. But more importantly, you're not going to hurt folks. So in these selects, we're down at booth 8, um, 841. Come down, we'll show you the demonstration, we'll show you how it works. We're real excited about it. We showed this at the World of uh, Asphalt. Uh, it, uh, a lot of people were saying, hey, we're looking for a solution to this particular problem. And it is a problem. We care about our workers. We want to make sure they're properly protected and give them a safe environment to work in. Had guys come out this morning. I've got asphalt. We're doing this. We've got a dust issue. It is a problem. And Asha has now said we can't run from it. And they're looking. Uh, at last count, there were 378 citations issued since October to, to contractors and cities for a lot for violating the OSHA regulations. 